Need some suspension work and shocks and uh, brakes, brake pads, lining, steering box, transmission, rear end. Cut cam. Just don't see no cut. It works. I love this button. Always remember, if you ain't first, you're last. Six miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. All right, welcome back to the Unnamed Movie Car Podcast, recording at you live from Los Angeles. Again. Uh, again, because <laughs> every movie's <laughs> filmed in Los Angeles. <laughs> or um, Florida or something. Or Florida. Because yeah. uh, today we're talking about Acceleration, the 2019 film, directed by Michael Marino and Daniel Zarelli. Uh, starring Sean Patrick Flannery, Dolph Lundgren, Chuck oh, yeah. Liddell, oh, yeah. Natalie Byrne, oh, and yeah. Danny Trejo. Yeah. Danny, Danny Trejo. Uh, Machete, Machete is, is in right. the movie. Um, that is right. So uh, yes. Dolph Lundgren, yep. most notably from yeah. Kindergarten Cop 2. Uh, what? No, that's not right. <laughs> that is factual. No, the, that is not the, right. The 2016 film no, Kindergarten no. Cop 2 starring oh, Dolph Lundgren. Kindergarten Cop 2. Yeah. No. I- <laughs> In 2016, <laughs> they remade oh, kindergarten. Well, they oh made gosh. a sequel to Kindergarten Cop okay. yeah. uh, with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. So, well, you know who was not in Kindergarten Cop too? Who? Uh, besides Daniel Trejo. Besides, well, <laughs> honestly, I could see him being in it, oh, yeah. being like Uncle Machete, <laughs> like the Spy Danny Kids Trejo. movies. Yeah, uh, big fan of his. But um, no, um, uh, Craig Lieberman. Craig Lieberman was not and, in. And Paul Shin. And Paul Shin. Shout outs um, to those two shout people. Shout out to both. Yeah. Uh, um, no, yeah. Dolph Lundgren, obviously, from Rocky Four. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Everyone knows him from that. And, and Expendables. Sorry. I was just about to say that. That's, <laughs> that's what I was saying was uh, because I looked right. on his IMDb yep. and it was for uh, Expendables 4 is in pre-production. Is it? I, I mean, thought, that's got to be the wait. geriatric episode, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> They started well, making the Expendables in like 2009, <laughs> well, and they were old then. Well, maybe they have like jet-powered hover, cr- you know, those They're little, all cyborgs. Little... <laughs> it's a weird RoboCop tie-in. <laughs> it's like those uh, those hover cars or whatever, the hover rounds. Yeah, or whatever. Oh but they're But they're like jet-powered, and they, they race through shopping malls trying to find the best bargains. Oh, I don't know. God. It's something like that. Uh, before we yeah. get a- into everything else, I yep. hope you guys enjoyed last week's Dual episodes, over five hours of content <laughs> last week between the Thanksgiving right. special that's and right. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Goodbye Pork Pie with Cam lots Cooley, of, which was of... an awesome episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, so over five hours of content so, just last week. So if you got a good night's sleep, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome there. Um, <laughs> nice nap. I hope you had a nice nap. That's and good. also, if you're a fan of car reviews, because yep. uh, last week was Thanksgiving, we are fully into review season oh. uh, on Shooting Cars, where I post a review every single day including weekends spanning from thanksgiving till new year's shout out to shooting cars (laughs) yay shout out to my day Uh, job so um, if you do enjoy car reviews head over to the shooting cars youtube channel uh there will be a new car review every single day including weekends um until new year's so bonus all right good so all right acceleration acceleration well we're at three minutes so we can't really do any spoilers right yet. so we don't do spoilers until 10 minutes yes um so i we actually did our shout out so we're good with the shout out i figured i'd share the backstory behind why i picked this movie okay um All and right. then we'll get into the car manufacturer of this movie yeah features i guess yeah. okay um <laughs> okay so i That's saw good. this movie at Menards. If you're not from the Midwest, Menards is a where you uh, buy most of your good movies. Is that <laughs> Menards? <laughs> Menards is a home improvement store, just yeah. like Lowe's or Home Depot yeah. or anything like that. I was actually looking for, oh, I think it was like Big some, box uh, some home s- improvement store, yeah. some screws for my RX7 right. uh, to get it running. Yeah, and I was with some friends, and I saw on the cover of Acceleration is Dolph Lundgren. Yep, and a Maserati Ghibli. Ghibli, so, is that yeah. it? Is that okay? Yes. All so right. I was like, oh, you know, I've been doing this podcast with my dad. I got to get this movie. Yep. I had no idea. And the title of was course. Acceleration, yep. which is a uh, car word, yep. I would feel like, it, uh, often yeah. mentioned with cars. <laughs> yeah. So I had no idea. I didn't even read the back. I picked up this movie for $8. <laughs> you didn't read the back? Nope. <laughs> no. I didn't read Just the back. From- 
Just from the cover of the movie. Wow. It had a Maserati on the front. And Dolph Lundgren. And Dolph Lundgren. And it was like the full Maserati. Like it was a yeah. full shot of the Maserati. Right. Yes. Which like a lot of movies that aren't based around cars. Yes. They'll have like the tail light yes. and like right. you know, James Bond getting out or whatever. Right, right. But this right, was right. a full framed image of the yeah. Maserati. So I was like, it, this has to be yeah. heavily in the movie. It does from the cover look like it's all about the car. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's it's not at all. Okay, well, um, it's, uh, you know. But it is about a Maserati. Well, there is, there uh, a Maserati's is, featured well, in it. Well, there's a Maserati. Um, yeah, a, so we'll talk somewhere. about that in a second. But I have the nearly complete history all right, let's, of Maserati. Let's so feel talk free about to Maserati. jump in let's... Um, whenever you want. No. But okay. Maserati was founded in 1914 in, I want to say it's Bologna, Italy. It's literally oh. spelled B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Bologna? Bologna. Bologna. I, I would, you know, people, yes, that's how you spell bologna as in the luncheon meat. However, uh, bologna, by the way, is not uh, spelled, when you say, oh, you're full of bologna, that's not spelled the same way as the luncheon meat, bologna. Uh, so I think, oh. actually, bologna comes from the country. Oh, yes, okay. Come from the country. So anyway. bologna, Italy. Enough by of the, that. It was founded by the five Maserati brothers. What? So this... That, uh, I didn't even write down their names because I wasn't going to try to pronounce them. They all sound like different pasta dishes. <laughs> and this is the most <laughs> Italian family there is. Because then okay. the, the right. logo was designed by a different Maserati relative named Mario. No, so Mario was, Maserati? Yes, yes. Mario Maserati like came up with the Trident right, logo, the, the, the Maserati name. logo. Coolest because there's name. a famous statue yeah. in Italy, um, one of the major cities i forget which one uh which it shows poseidon with the trident and so right. he literally just drew the <laughs> trident from that statue if hey, you look that at looks... that statue it's it's literally the maserati Dude, logo that looks cool <laughs> so yeah so he literally just plucked it so i don't know how much handiwork well, mario did that's some good interesting I, I but there was that. five maserati brothers three of which were like the main guys who worked on you know because any time there's five brothers working on something <laughs> there's always one that's like half into and it and half got, not and the mom is like you got to include your youngest <laughs> brother you know <laughs> hey take luigi <laughs> with you you know he's sitting here alone yeah. watch playing video game this is 1914 yeah, so i can't yeah. be he's playing tiddlywinks it's or it's, it's his turn to hit the <laughs> wheel with the stick let it let your brother have a turn um, so he's okay. So the youngest ones out of yeah. Know. Well, so, so three. So the the major the three brothers. pretty much started Maserati, uh, and they're as only they, as focus they in, as they say in Italian trace. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which is not even Italian; it's Spanish. Um, anyway, go ahead. So only focus was race cars. They did not. They didn't set out to build road going oh, okay. cars. They only strictly built race cars. Wait, back in 1914? Yes. Like that was what they set out yes. to do. Okay, cool. Um, so right, well, they them. were founded in 1914. They didn't really start participating in races until the yeah. 20s. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. So, but they actually were very successful in racing. And now, obviously, these race cars are by today's standards are. A little bit, a little bit higher than a red wagon, but you know, <laughs> th th they were fast for the time. All right, okay, cool. Um, I'll give him props for that. After Alfieri, okay. Alfieri was like the main Maserati brother who ah. started. Uh, he was also a race car driver. He was like he he was the guy. He was, was the he front the man. oldest. He was the singer. I, it did not say the ages. Okay. I would assume though. because he died in 1932. Okay, well, and he so. Been. Before we go any further, yeah. if you mm -hmm. are a, a partaker in alcohol, um, oh, a, okay. a fun drinking game you can play throughout this podcast uh -oh. will be <laughs> how many times does Maserati change hands? Uh, you'll get nice and hammered here in about 10 minutes. Wow. Uh, okay, so after uh, Alfieri died in 1932, ownership was sold to Aldofo Orsi, mm -hmm. O-R-S-I, okay. real okay. weird name. All right. All right. Who relocated the company to his hometown of Manana, Italy, where it is still headquartered today. Oh, well, at least it stayed in one place. Right. So right. after okay. 1932, it right. actually has stayed in one place since All right, then. Fine. Um, so they continued with racing, and they actually won the Indianapolis 500 in 1939 and 1940. And they are the only Italian brand to win the Indianapolis 500. Wow. Okay, so that, that's, that's a pretty cool, cool. piece that of is, history. Yeah, that's pretty good. So Maserati's kind of on their game right now. They're not yeah, building okay. any... And what year was that? That was that was 1939 and 1940. Okay. Uh, so they were... Ooh, right before the war, yeah. Right, we'll okay. get into that. All right, okay. Um, 
So they were kind of on top of their game. They were killing it with race cars. Yeah. They were building very, very competitive cars, whether it were V8s or I think it was like V8s, V10s, and they had a couple V16s. Jeez. Yeah. So V16s. Er, yeah. That's so and nuts. they had a couple like straight eights and stuff like that. Wow, but so they were slick. I mean, they were Oh yeah, Maserati okay. was the happening company. Okay. Um, right. when it came to race cars. All right. And I mean, they were right up there. They were beating Ferrari, they were beating, wow. you know, all okay. these different companies. All right. Well, Ferrari a little bit later on. I don't think yeah. Ferrari was that old, but um yeah. So during the war, Maserati switched to the war effort for Italy, much like yeah. Ford did okay. for America, right. yep. retooling their factories to build, yep. you know, whatever was needed for the war. Yeah. Maserati then raced Porsche to build a V16 town car for Mussolini before wow. Porsche could build one for Hitler. Oh, so geez. both of these companies were trying wow. to build town cars for wow. their supreme leader of the era. Uh, and Porsche supreme. ended up building, wow. Ferdinand Porsche built a custom car for Hitler before Maserati could build one for Mussolini, so they scrapped the project. <laughs> wow. But it was going to be a V16 yeah. town car, <laughs> you need which that. is just you nuts. Need, you need 16 cylinders, is so, what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. So after the war, um, in 1957, they yeah. departed from racing. So basically after the war was over, they resumed yeah. building race cars again. Good for them. Um, and they departed from racing in 1957 and yeah. started out building road cars with mm. the 1957 3500 GT. It had a 3.5 liter inline six that was actually taken directly from their race car. Oh, and they sold wow. 2,200 of them. Oh, okay. Well, um, throughout bad. a couple model years, and they had yeah. like a, a convertible version and, and things like well, that. I guess back then, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, I guess. Well, Maserati, even to this day, is a very limited production run yeah. right. um, yeah. company. So 2,200, is it, that's about their wheelhouse. Okay. All right. Uh, in 1968, the company was then bought by Citroen. Oh, uh, no kidding. Adolfo wow. Orsai remained the president, but Citroen was now the owner. Uh, they were There was a give and take from Maserati and Citroen. Mm -hmm. uh, Maserati developed the engines for okay. Citroen. All right. Uh, because, you know, they had built race car engines for the last yeah. 40 or 50 years. Yeah, they're years. pretty good at it by then. Um, yeah. And then Citroen gave uh, Maserati a bunch of tech mainly hydraulics. Um, okay. So basically just other vehicle technology to keep their cars up to date. But did Citroen ever build anything more than a tiny little get-around car? Did they ever build anything bigger than that? Not or? to my knowledge. They right. never really... Citroen is a... It's an European company. I don't think we ever got here. I don't think so either. Um, never but seen them very either. famous overseas. The yeah. Citroen 2CV is yes. like... Yes. Uh, that that's a huge that yeah. was the Beatle to the French. It was, was the every the one, man's car. Was that in the Bond movie? Um For Your Eyes Only? The he drives a Citroen. I think probably. That, okay. Probably. Yeah, it was probably yeah. Um okay. I actually just recently sat in a Citroen. Oh really? Two C V. Yeah. Nice. Um if you go to the Lane Motor Museum in Tennessee, <laughs> in Nashville, Tennessee, they yeah. have one out front once you walk into the museum that you could just freely sit in and take pictures yeah. and stuff, yeah. um, which is really, really cool. Will and, this be part of your book of the auto museums that you've visited? I because am doing, totally... actually, early 2022, in a couple yeah. months here, I'm doing a weekly series called Museum Mondays, Wow! where uh, okay. I'll feature a new museum right. every Monday for nine weeks straight. Wow, I will shut um, up then. No, 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 you're, you're good, good. Um, but... Uh, definitely right. check out the Lane Motor Museum. If you're cool, in Nashville, lane. it's, lane, I mean, they had a Lane Motor Museum. As an L-A-N-E? Yeah, like a lane. car lane. Okay, car um, Okay, cool. It's, I mean, they had a whole section of Czechoslovakian cars. Cool. Which, ah, cool. I didn't even know Czechoslovakia made cars. Yeah. One of the moving exhibits was fabric cars. What? So post-war, it was actually yeah. very, or during the war too, it was very common to build cars out of wood. And then use fabric for the bodywork because metal was in such high demand. Wow! Yeah, it was really cool. So there's a, <laughs> would be a there's a car the with a fabric hood, and yeah. there was a carburetor sticking out through the middle of the fabric. And I'm like, that can't be safe. <laughs> right. There's no way. <laughs> right. But uh, uh yeah. they probably covered it in a, in a highly explosive lacquer. Probably, it's probably, it was probably the, lead paint. Kind of like the Hindenburg kind yeah. of thing. Um, anyway, yeah. But anyway, getting back to 1968 yep. when Citroen acquired Maserati, yep. take a drink. Um, oh, this wow. resulted okay. right. in a couple of cars, but mainly the Bora, 
which was the first mid-engined road car from Maserati, the Maserati Ooh, Bora. Bora. Um, so it's a highly collectible car. It kind of looks like a Pantera, kind of looks like a Lamborghini of the all time. Right. Okay. Um, and yeah, this was very... Maserati returning to mid-engine because gotcha. all of their race cars had been mid-engined. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah. So okay, th- right. when they went to road cars, they did a okay. front engine because that yeah. was traditional. But this is sort of Maserati returning to uh, mid-engine, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But then, in 1973, the oil crisis hit, and Maserati wah, took it wah. really hard, really hard. <laughs> across Italy, bum, bum, across bum, bum. Italy, like yeah. all of like yeah. Italian manufacturing, yeah. work was cut between 60 and 70 percent oh my God. of work was cut in one year. Uh, one year later, Citroen went bankrupt. Oh. So on May 22nd, 1975, Citroen announced the liquidation of Maserati. Oh, man. But- the workers never stopped production and even picketed for their jobs. The mayor of Moder- uh, Modena, the mayor of Modena, and local politicians sprung into action and ended up saving all 800 of the factory workers' jobs. Okay, that's amazing. So they picketed, rioted, basically all the stuff, and they ended yeah. up getting acquired. Wow. So on August 8th, 1975, ownership was bought out by an Italian state-owned holding company called GEPI and Alejandro de Tommaso. Okay. Uh, Tommaso? T-O-M-A-S-O. These names, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who was a former racing car driver from yeah. Argentina. Yeah. Uh, they resumed building cars with the same chassis, but now Maserati's had De Tommaso's engines. So okay. De Tommaso is actually an auto manufacturer okay, um, from Argentina. And so the Maseratis were then um, got these engines, but they were using the same chassis. Okay. What's up? Why are you looking at no, the I'm just, uh, recording because setup? I, no, I'm just looking okay. at our, our We're levels. still recording, right? We People are recording. Still <laughs> okay. um, We're still recording. In the 1980s, Maserati yep. abandoned the mid-engine abandoned. V8. Abandoned? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, they abandoned the mid-engine okay. V8 for front-wheel, yep. uh, or for front-engine rear-wheel drive cars with twin-turbo V6s. Oh. So in the 80s, they transitioned from mid-engine V8s to front-engine twin-turbo V6s. Oh, okay. okay. Um, right. And this was called the bi-turbo era. Okay. You know, twin turbo era. Yep. Um, yep. And all the cars in the 80s from Maserati were built on the same platform. So much oh, like okay. the Iacocca yeah, with, the the K K pl- with the K cars, yep. Um, yep. all the Maseratis were built off the same bi-turbo platform. And actually, the platform lasted up until the mid-90s as well. But... Lee Iacocca gets brought up again. Okay. Uh, in 1984, Chrysler bought 5% of Maserati. Take a drink. Take a drink. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. uh, 5%. Take a half a drink. Yeah, take a little <laughs> sip. Uh, Lee okay. Iacocca <laughs> was a close friend of De Tomasos. Was he? And they agreed wow. to build the Chrysler TC by Maserati. Mm-hmm. So oh. back in the mid-'80s, you could buy okay. a Chrysler TC by that Maserati. Vaguely that's familiar. that's the name. My okay. my friend down in St. Louis actually has one. Maybe that's where I heard it from is from you. And they had my friend yeah. Max um definitely look up cool stuff in weird cars. That's their YouTube channel. All right, shout uh, out. and they have yep. a Chrysler TC by Maserati. Okay. That is it's a 2.4 liter turbo. Yeah. Maybe a 2 liter turbo and it's one of 200 that came in manual. It's a stick shift one. So, unfortunately, it hasn't been running well enough for me to review yet, but hopefully at one point I'll get down to St. Louis. And I was going to say, are a... they going to let you review it? Then? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, that'll be cool then. We'll yeah. look so, forward to that one. Yeah, it's such a weird car. If you look up Chrysler TC by Maserati, it's a Chrysler car with Maserati badges. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Then, <laughs> okay. All right. Get that right. drink ready. Right. In 1993, Dave Tommaso sold 50, his 51% of Maserati to Fiat. And this right. is starting yet another new era for Maserati. The Quadraporte 4 was made in this era, but still rode on the bi-turbo chassis from the 80s. So basically, Fiat redesigned the car, but used the okay. same setup as the 80s. All right. And it was I'll offered with both the V6 and the V8. All right. Well, good. This did not last long, because then Fiat sold its 50% of Maserati to Ferrari, oh, who okay, was a longtime drink. competitor drink. to Maserati. All right. 
Uh, Ferrari built them a new factory since they had been using the same Maserati factory since the 1940s. Okay. So Ferrari went out, built them a new factory, actually gave them modern equipment to be building these cars. Okay. Um, And Ferrari helped them develop the 3200 GT, which was a just little sports car. Yeah. uh, Which had a 3.2 liter twin turbo V8 making 370 horsepower. So we're getting into like the early 2000s now. Okay. Um, They also helped them develop the MC12, which was a supercar to come out of Maserati. It had a 6.0 liter V12 mid engined. It was basically, it shared a lot with the Enzo Ferrari. Okay. But this was like, this was in like Midnight Club, like the video games I had growing up. I remember I had a book of supercars, or I would rent. Uh, or borrow a book from the library of supercars <laughs> back in elementary school, and it had one on the cover. For the you only... kids that don't know what a library yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they ended up, they only made 50 MC12s. But wow. that was like a pretty notable okay. car. All right. Then in 2005, Maserati was split from Ferrari and paired with Alfa Romeo. Is under that the like ownership a drink or a half a drink? Or... I don't know. Okay. Uh, since then, Fiat has purchased Chrysler as well. So, Fiat now owns Maserati and Chrysler. Wow. Okay. Then. Well, okay, here we go. In 2021, yeah. just eight months before this podcast was made, um, <laughs> Fiat has merged with multiple other corporations to form Stellantis. Stellantis is now a corporation responsible for Abarth, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Citroen, Dodge, DS, Fiat, Jeep, Lancia, Maserati, Mopar, Opel, Peugeot, Ram, and Vauxhall. I see these names scrolling very quickly yes. to the top of the screen. Very so. Uh huh. That is the back history of Maserati. Wow. It has okay. changed hands well, more yeah. times than I think any other company I've I've done any research that, on. Yeah, that is a weird, like mythic. It can't die. It's like this yeah. car company that just keeps going and going and yeah. It's just again crazy. on our our SPK or whatever of. Things that need a Netflix Cavalcade short, or, yeah. yeah Cav- things that need a, a a Netflix short series, yeah. Um, we have a lot I think of them. Maserati deserves one. Yeah, Netflix. If you want to come to us for yeah. you know ideas, well, just be based off of like yeah. racing Porsche to try to build their supreme leader yeah. a vehicle. The amount of times it's switched hands, the oil crisis. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it it is. It's it's it, something that it, no, won't it is, die. It's, it's it is. It's like mythical. It's like this crazy creature that they created. Maybe it's the trident. Maybe it's the magic of King Trident or whatever. King, it just it keeps King Ding Dong. Yeah. I, and even today they're selling Maseratis. They're yeah. terrible. They are terrible. Cars. And it's, I'm sorry if you. Yeah. Let me let me see here. Where did I put this info? Please well, tell okay, me. Well, okay. So here's okay. Go ahead. No, no, no d- vamp. Because I'm. Oh, oh okay. I was gonna say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I want to no, no, go for it. Go for it. Go no, for it. No, I was just gonna say we talked about this before. The song. Life's been good to me so far by um, Jimi Hendrix. I don't know who it's. E- the Eagles. <laughs> the e- is it Eagles? I think so. No, it's <laughs> no, it is. People are going to be shocked. No, it's not. It's it's. Uh, yes, I'm pulling up Spotify right now. Okay, all keep right. Keep talking because I, well, I can't. Well, so here's them, the so. thing: is people yell at this podcast. People have been known to yell at the podcast because you and I. Life's been gone. Re- er, well, geez. <laughs> Life's been good by the Eagles. It's really? by the Eagles. It's by the Eagles? Or just Eagles. But, who's, it, it, but it's who sings it, though. Does it say? Oh, I don't want to okay. get copyright it, stricken right. there. So it, no, it's just Eagles. All right, so fine. Okay, so it's the Eagles. So anyway, they actually made the Maserati name very, very, uh, you know, top of mind to a lot of people. Oh, my Maserati does 185. Yeah, that lyric. And yeah, exactly. So I lost my license, now I don't drive. Everyone then was like, ah, Maserati, that's like, yeah, it's better than a Ferrari. That's, uh, that's and right. honestly, doing research, Maserati and, yeah. was cool at, very, what, very what, cool yeah, at right. times. Oh, absolutely. Very uncool at other yeah, times. Right. And so it's just, like you said, yeah. it just keeps rebounding and such. Well, and that is that is the weird thing is that um, the ones, I mean, the ones that I, that at, in the era that I was working on cars, mm-hmm. they were dogs. I mean, yeah. they were. Well, that was what, the 80s? Late eighties. So that's that's the bi turbo era. So yes, late eighties, yeah. early nineties. It was a lot of badge done. engineering. They a were, lot of. I mean, it was like you would buy a Maserati just to look cool and make everyone think you're rich and all that. Which is the exact point 
I think of why it's so interesting they use this for the movie. Yeah. Because it's one of the cheapest it, really the only reason you buy a Maserati now is to yeah. look like you have cash. But if right. anyone knows anything about anything, <laughs> okay, then wow. you know that a Maserati is just like it, it it's a dumb flex. Have you ever heard of Supreme? No. As a car company? No, 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 no. 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 As a clothing brand. Uh, I I know like Supreme like I don't know. So Supreme is a, they call it a hype beast brand. Okay. Um, basically, right. they do drops like every Thursday. Yeah. And they'll only sell a limited number of a said item or print. Okay. And it'll be, people pay like hundreds of dollars and then thousands of dollars on the resale market. What? So one, Why? one, one day, one Thursday morning, they yeah, literally sold a brick. Yeah. With just their logo yep. on it, I think for like fifty bucks. Okay. And now you see these bricks on the secondhand market for two fifty, three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars. But it's it's not like the quality is any higher. It's yeah. just the rarity and like people walk okay. around with the Supreme right. shirts on because they just want you to know that they spent a hundred dollars on their T shirt. Rather than it being right. like this, you know, fabric that, you know, can do this that and the other <laughs> cure so, cancer yeah yeah so it's it's all one right. of those things yeah. where it's purely just a flex and that right. is the maserati all right well it's true very true which funny there, there's a kid on tiktok who yeah. drives a maserati oh okay and he makes a ton of tiktoks where he's like he's like oh like i wasted my money on my maserati well where's your maserati that like he like tries to like really make the maserati like look cool <laughs> and he got <laughs> dogged on so hard <laughs> that he deleted his account i'm pretty sure what people okay, were like uh, yeah. shut your mouth yeah. like people went after him well that yeah when you're yeah when you're doing that i can but again you. going back to this movie to put it on the cover they yes. probably think, oh, this is going to make our cover look so expensive. Right. And it's going to make the movie seem like it was such an expensive movie yeah. when it was not. No. It, it, and yeah. so we are well beyond the spoiler alerts. We can go. We can. Do you want to get into the specific car from the movie now or do you want to get into the. Well, let's talk a little bit about okay. the actual movie and then let's come back to cars. So okay. we've talked about cars for a long time, which is great. Right. That's an awesome thing. I appreciate you doing all that. It's part of the title it. of the, the podcast is, is car. Because car. Yeah. Movie, uh, on, 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 on a movie, movie. car. Yeah, um, you're right. It is. Yeah. That's right. So <laughs> let's talk about the movie. Right. What did well, you think? All right. So it was. Uh, <laughs> It was um, interesting. Um, it was, uh, you know, I didn't think it was that great. I honestly didn't think it was that great. I didn't really, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled with very much any part of it at all. So anyway, how did you feel about this movie? I hated this movie. Did it you was, hate it? It was, it was bad. I would say it's in the running for one of our worst movies we've Is done so far. Worse than Blood Car? Because <laughs> well, that's a pretty low mark. Thing. Yeah, Blood Car. I laughed at some parts but because true. it was so ridiculous. Yes. and yeah. like it did. Ha like everyone in that movie was young, right? In Blood Car, yes. right? Yeah. So everyone was. It, it it almost has this childlike, you know, appeal to it. Where like <laughs> college you know, film project. Well, like you know, yeah. like uh, you being a parent, obviously, yep. I would yep. bring home drawings and stuff, and you'd put it on the refrigerator. Oh yeah, those yeah. drawings were terrible. <laughs> I mean, like, and I would tell you every time. Yeah, and you'd every hit me. Time, but yeah, well, every time. No, that's not true. <laughs> but when you come home, I would say that is an awful picture. Let's hang it on the fridge. Somewhere <laughs> you made a magnet out of a picture that I'm I drew, sure I and it's yeah. it was on like yellow paper yeah, or something. Probably, yeah. But it's because I love you, right? Son. But well, like you put yeah. it up there because it's like, oh, this kid that I created yeah. has now <laughs> done art. <laughs> Which is cool, right? The no, idea it is, of it is cool. It's like, oh, they're becoming their own person we're with very the ideas. Proud of you, mom and I are very proud of you. Right, but okay. if you went to go sell that, it's not going to make money. You're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the well, then, in the scheme okay. of art, all right, it's not good art. <laughs> it's sedimental to you. Well, so like blood car, it's kind of like ah, oh, it's like a little kid's drawing. It's like you tried. <laughs> You tried. You, know? you tried. Oh. You guys tried your. You, you tried, guys. You look, tried. At you, look at oh, you. You look made at, a movie. Look at you. You <laughs> guys made a whole movie. That's awesome. <laughs> you were like adults. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like your people. You know, it's like your. It's almost like your people. Um, 
<laughs> okay, so, I so get like, that. So like Blood Car, it's All like right. it almost okay. has that adorable quality where it's like these like twenty something oh, year olds actually went out and made a yeah. whole movie. All right, okay. But this gotcha. Dolph Lundgren, yeah. Experienced, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Patrick Flannery, yeah. Experienced, true, Boondock true, Saints. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the big things. Uh, Chuck Liddell, very experienced in having a, actually. A I Mohawk. like him as an actor. I think he's pretty oh, really? cool. Yeah, I think he's pretty cool. He's another one of those that's transferred from like wrestling into yeah. acting. Oh yeah, you could tell. Just but, like The Rock, just like yeah. John Cena, but you know, he just was, like uh, he was born in '69. Wow. Yeah, that so guy he's like old. 52. Oh my God. I know. It's like um, I always mix up Dana White with Chuck Liddell. If anyone knows oh, who yeah? Dana White okay, is, I, I don't know. Uh, he's like kind of the guy that runs the UFC. Oh, I always right. just yeah. imagine okay. him as Chuck Liddell. <laughs> um, I don't know. But I just... uh, yeah. I'm, I'm blanking on the, yes. the last guy that made right. that. Uh, Dave Bautista. Uh, yeah, not, uh, not Shaquille O'Neal. Not Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Different sport to actor, to now okay. DJ, to right. now police officer. Um, but not Shaquille. Shaquille's no. not a police officer. Yeah, no, Shaquille's a police officer. No, he's yes, not. Yes, he is. Is he? I swear, in like Florida or something. What does Shaquille O'Neal do? He's like a sheriff do, or something. Not do. He's one of my um, favorites. He's Shout out to Shaquille O'Neal. But anyway, these yeah. experienced people should know that this movie was yeah. bad. Well, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, You know, yeah, I mean... Um, it just it, it felt like such a lack of effort. Yeah. That I when I made this thumbnail, I did not give this thumbnail effort. So if you're watching the YouTube <laughs> version, I barely <laughs> colored in the Maserati and I wrote episode wow. thirty two or something. Or something. It literally <laughs> says in red marker or something. Because it's yeah. I, I was like, if they're wow, not gonna give were, me any effort in this were, movie, I'm not gonna give effort to this so thumbnail. I owe you ten dollars. For putting your money, it's like eight dollars, but eight, I'll take yeah, the round up. I'll give you. That's I was fine. gonna bring down actual cash and hand. Well, it to I you. also bought this movie forty-five minutes from home, so I mean the gas money. Alone, oh, jeez. Okay, there you go. I fine. mean, I was out there for well, reason, but. in your car, yeah, the gas money would equal the the two bucks of whatever. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. yeah and the and Mazda three. Yeah, <laughs> that was like barely like a gallon of fuel. No. So. Um, yeah, I felt bad that you bought this thing, but now it's part of the vault collection. Yeah, the, we're our vault. We should like we auction off our vault. Yeah, we should, of, yeah. we'll sign them. Maybe, yeah, maybe for episode one hundred or something. And maybe um, some dog somewhere will. But I do have some notes. I know yeah. if you you have some. I notes. have notes. Look at this. I have notes. It's on a actual physical post-it <laughs> note. <laughs> That's a whole sticky note. I have one sticky note. Okay, go go, go through your notes first. Are you sure? Yeah. You yeah. Okay. All right. So first thing I noticed was. Um, I, I, the the actress's name is Natalie. Okay. Uh, she's the main chick mm -hmm. woman. I shouldn't say chick. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the main female lead. She had kind of this weird thing with the crosses. Did you notice that? The, like on her the, eye? The, yeah. So she yeah. had tattooed crosses, which, by the way, changed. Like there was three, and then there was like two. Oh really? Yeah. I think in some oh, scene I didn't it was like that. two. Okay. Anyway, so obviously not real tattoos, yeah. but that was kind of a whole Golgotha thing going on there. You yeah. Know, with the, the you know the whole hill of you know the crucifixion and the three crosses i was kind of like well that's an interesting kind of thing going on yeah there. so that's one of the things i noticed wasn't sure exactly what the tie-in was going to be with that like if they were going to say anything nah, nothing about that so there's just some crosses um okay this movie <laughs> second thing had more lens flares than a J.J. Abrams movie. Yeah, it was a lot. Lots the, the of lighting, lens flares, yeah. A, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the lighting in a lot of the scenes. Yeah, it's red and blue. Right, but it w it was very heavy. Very like, heavy. Like they didn't have lights <laughs> in the room. It was just <laughs> the mood lighting on the walls. There wasn't any like I top think, down lighting. I think that's the only lenses they had to cover the lights was either red or blue. Yeah, and you just that's but all. like. It, it almost seemed like they were just in blank rooms that yeah. they just lit. So I'm sure all of the interior <laughs> shots were just some sound stage somewhere, right. and they just lit up the walls differently. Well, and then like the a Hummer, music video. The Hummer actually had like red or blue neon underneath yeah. it that they were shooting from and yeah. all of that. So that was very interesting too. But I noticed tons of lens flares yeah. all over the place. So lots of things going on. Then the other thing I wanted to point out here was. What father 
gives their son a sandwich at two o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. So spoiler. <laughs> real big spoiler. Real big alert. spoiler. Real the, big. The the so yeah. the mom that's yep. doing all the tasks throughout the movie. Uh, we, do you want to tr- explain it a little bit because so bad, <laughs> or do you want me to because you hate it so yeah, much? Yeah, you explain. I'll it. explain. I need... Let me explain. Okay. So basically, this mom is driving around, and she's got five tasks that she has to do. There's some guy in a weird room. It's Dolph Lundgren. He's looking at computers, and somehow he's able to watch her all the time through closed-circuit TV cameras and things like that, so he can always watch her. He watches her in the car. He watches her in a diner, watches her all over the place, and he's the one giving her the five tasks. She has five envelopes. Every time she opens an envelope, it says something like, uh, go burn down this drug clinic and uh, go kill this guy, right? So she's got five things, and she has to get all of these things done before 7 o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, her son will die because the guy, the bad guy, Dolph Lundgren, has the son, right? So he has the son. He's holding him in his house or wherever he's at. and Shot he, in one room. <clears throat> shot in one <laughs> Exactly, shot in one room. Yeah. Has the kid, and... So the mom is desperately trying to get all of these things done so she can see her kid. And she keeps asking, I just want to talk to my son. I just want to talk to my son. And he keeps saying, Dolph Lundgren. <clears throat> Dolph Lundgren keeps going. You're blowing a gasket just <laughs> trying to describe this <laughs> freaking movie. This. I can't talk anymore. Um, so the, the Dolph Lundgren keeps saying, you know, this, you know, the score, you know how this works, blah, blah, blah. He says this. You can't talk to your son until you're done. And she says, I want to talk to him. And, and he says, you got to finish all this stuff. Anyway, that's the basic premise of the movie. She has to get all these tests done before 7 a.m., Be, uh, you know, or his or her son's going to die. So there you go. Now. Do you want to give the spoilers well, on that? Yeah, this? that's the thing is that <clears throat> yeah. the son ends up... So Dolph Lundgren, the bad guy, yep. and the mom running around, it's their son together. Yeah. It's, it's... both of their kids. Which, first of all, could you imagine <laughs> that kid at school on Monday be like, yeah, I hate going to my dad's house. He gives me <laughs> he gives me a sandwich at 2 a.m. and then calls my mom about how he's going to murder me. <laughs> and then I'm caught in crossfire yeah. at the end of the movie. And then my parents are in a shootout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Timmy, your mom didn't give you a Lunchable today? Oh, my parents literally shot at people. <laughs> and I left with my mom. I left my son. My dad did <laughs> Yeah. The, please don't send me back to dad's house. Right. He talks about murdering right. me over the phone. <laughs> No, he actually talks about yeah. it. No, it's not like I he's mean, talk about joking it. around or alluding to it. No, he actually talks about shooting it me. It should have just ended with Child Protective <laughs> Services <laughs> right. kicking down the door. It's a PSA. It is a PSA Jeez. for Child Protective Services. So it is, yeah, and that is obviously the weirdest twist is the fact that it's their son together. So the question is, why would Dolph Lundgren make her go through all of that for her own son, which is actually their son, why didn't he just... The motive is weird. Right. The motive is just not right. So why didn't he just say to her, hey, you know what? I owe this guy. Because how it ends up is that actually Dolph Lundgren owes another bad guy, a badder bad guy, a lot of money. And so he's trying to make Natalie's character, I can't remember her name, I don't know. Does it say her name? I, it says her name somewhere. He's trying to make her do all of these chores, these tasks yeah. for him, so that he'll get the money, so that he can give the money to the bad, bad guy, and then he will be okay. And all this is done in a Maserati Ghibli. She's exactly. running around Los that's Angeles in a Maserati. It, that's all there is. Every time, Yeah, that's all she drives. That's literally the only, well, not the only Which car. Which Acceleration but. is a dumb name for yeah. this movie. Yeah, yeah. It didn't accelerate, by no. the way. By the way, it yeah. doesn't. Well, although, I will say at the end, did you notice something about the Maserati? No. She now has a white one at the end. She does. It switches colors. Oh. All throughout the movie, it's a black Maserati, but the ending shot, she pulls away well, in a white Maserati Zach, if to we, signal her Zach, purity. Now, right, okay. We have learned from Cannonball Run, if nothing else, that you can paint a car one color yeah, and then no have kidding. some construction workers hose it off yeah. to make it another color. Yeah, I forgot about Cannonball Run. We can totally do that. But By the way, there's no airplanes landing 
on streets. Yeah, but this. there's Sean Patrick Flannery in the movie, so <laughs> so far wow, on the pod, yeah. he's, he's been two. 0 for two. Right, I know. I Lady know. Driver was also not good. However, yeah, it was. Okay, okay. Sorry, it wasn't as bad as this one. No, no Lady no, no, Driver no. was yeah, better Lady than Driver's this movie. Better. Yeah. Uh, get on with the rest of your notes, because right. then I'll get to my okay. The rest of my notes. So, uh, so he gives him a sandwich at two o'clock in the morning. So Dolph. <laughs> I mean, that kid's going to wake up with a stomachache. Like, <laughs> have you ever eaten at 2 a.m. and not had a stomachache? <laughs> no matter what you eat at 2 a.m., it's just not going to be good. Dad, I have a tummy ache. <laughs> I will murder you. I am on the phone with your mother, and I'm going to murder you if she doesn't go to the cafe. Your mother has to go to the drug clinic and burn it down. Yeah. Is that what you want? Anyway, um, so, and then I noticed, too, that the bad guys, even the baddest of the bad guys, they were very unsatisfying kills. Yeah. Oh, and did you notice, by the way, that when the Sean Patrick Flannery guy comes in, right? Yeah. His character comes in. At the very end, he gets shot by no one. If you watch it, I actually oh, watched, really? I watched it frame by frame to try and figure out who shot him at the end. No one shoots him. Literally, Dolph Lundgren is not shooting him. The woman, played by Natalie, is not shooting him. All of a sudden, you just, you don't even hear a gunshot. You hear something that sounds like something dropped in the kitchen. Yeah. There's some, like, utensils that dropped in the kitchen. And then all of a sudden, Sean Patrick Flannery is like, oh, and he falls to the floor. Oh, my I'm like, God. You're not I even didn't, I didn't notice that. No, he, he's not shot by anyone, but assumes he's shot. It's like two kids playing guns, Yeah. right? And the one guy is like, "Oh, you shot me!" And yeah. then he falls to the ground. No one shot him. You could, I tell me if you watch this movie and tell me who shot him. No one. Yeah. It was a mystery. It was the guy in the grassy knoll. Oh it my was, god! <laughs> it was a third shooter. Maybe it was the son. Maybe the son picked up. Maybe a, there's a deleted <laughs> scene. I don't know. I don't know because it's really weird. Anyway, no one shoots him, so it wasn't very satisfying. It wasn't like. Okay, he got totally blown away and stuff. I don't even remember how it ends, to be honest with you, in the movie. Wow. Does he shoot him, or who who shoots who? I was so checked out yeah, by I that know, point. I, I really didn't care. So somehow he dies. Yeah. And then the other guy, who's the who's the the uh, skin trafficker, the uh, uh, human uh, human trafficker, I think it is. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway, first of all, he has. They have everyone locked up in the basement. And they're mostly men. Now, I don't know anything about human trafficking, and thank goodness I don't. And I think it's a horrible, hideous, terrible thing. And I'm not making light of that. But I don't think a ton of guys would be trafficked. I think it would be mostly women. But I'm not uh, Yeah, sure. I have no idea. I have no it, idea. It, so leave it, your it, comments in the comments section. It seemed section. very, like... I don't want to say like on the nose. Yeah. But it's it kind of like, like, oh, this is like, like, hey, uh, like if like, oh, I'm a drug dealer and he just yeah. has a bunch of Ziploc <laughs> baggies of sugar. It's like, oh, that's OK. Hey, this like, is drug. Just no. write drug dealer on his name tag. And then, like, you know, what that I mean? was pretty much. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much what these people were. So uh, anyway, I thought that was really odd. And then. um, Oh, and by the way. Yeah. And so the other thing was just the fact that since the woman played by Natalie knows that Dolph Lundgren's character, I don't remember yeah, any don't names, remember, by yeah. the way, the movie, knows that he's the father. Again, why would they play these games? Why wouldn't he say, hey, honey, guess what? Let's let's get a sitter for the kid yeah. and let's go do these things and get it done. I think, actually, I think that would have been a cool movie yeah. if the mom and dad got together and they actually then that made them bond. Like yeah. they got together and then at the end of the movie, because they were estranged to begin with, Okay, there's our new movie. Yeah, there we you just, go. There we go. New Couple movie. Couple rewrites there. <laughs> so that's it. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. I have I have a couple notes. Okay. First of all, the thing that bothered me the most yep. was besides right the at title? the beginning, besides the title, <laughs> uh, is that the GoPro is clearly visible in the car. Did yes! you see that? Yes. And yes. they never cut to that footage. Now, yeah. in hindsight, it makes sense because he's always watching right. her. Right. Yes. And but, that's what I thought. But what bothered me was that you see the screen of the GoPro on. Yes. You can see that the rear screen is on. Yes. For some Correct. shots. Yes. That means that the GoPro was turned on in the last 45 <laughs> seconds. 
Oh, because is Because that screen only stays on for 45 seconds to conserve battery. Oh. And so it shuts off in other scenes. So it either leave the screen on all the time or leave the screen off all the time. Right. Okay. But when you see yeah. it, it actually, the screen turned off mid shot. Did it? Yes. Oh, my it God. It turned off mid shot one time, wow. meaning it yeah. was started 45 seconds ago. That's probably, you know, they probably said, okay, rolling. Yeah, turn rolling. On the, yeah, okay, turn, turn, on turn the thing. thing. Yeah. Right. So that turn bothered me just as someone okay. that uses a GoPro Absolutely. every single day. I understand day. that. I get um, it. I get it. And I have written here, is she a vlogger? Is she reviewing it? Because this is the first time I saw it. <laughs> right. I didn't realize right. she was being watched. Like, why would she have a car cam? Yeah. And that's or... literally the GoPro I used to is it? to film reviews. And it's yeah. not far off from where I mounted. I mounted I up a little bit higher. Most of this was shot on GoPro. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Anyway, yeah. Honestly, the security camera footage of her in the in yeah. the restaurant looked yeah. like a GoPro. It, footage. it could have been. Could Probably have been. was on yep. a stick. By um, the way, the the uh, budget was three million, according to IMDb. Yes, but I couldn't find a box office. True, I couldn't either. But interesting to say that that was estimated three million, and I bet it all went to actors. Obviously, the, yeah, the it, name brand like one point or two point nine of it went to <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. Uh, right. Okay. The gun effects were terrible. Yes. That, I told you that. Piss terrible. <laughs> I mean, because here's the thing. First of all, all of the gunshots made the exact same noise. Pew, pew. <laughs> it was literally a dropped in sound was... effect. Oh, they shot six times. Yeah. Let me just copy paste this sound <laughs> six was... times. It was a guy off camera. Pew, pew, Wh- pew. Which normally you would think, oh, a gun makes the same noise. But you have to think of acoustics. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they were in a room. Sometimes right. they were outside. Things vibrate and yes. uh, yeah. uh, reverberate reverberated yeah. thank you yep. um differently yes. in different True. environments yes also the muzzle flashes were very obviously a picture yeah. and yeah. they used the screen filter yeah. in photoshop yeah. or yeah. after effects yeah. Yeah. where it takes the black and makes it see through okay um, yeah if you set the blend mode to screen or whatever gotcha um, yeah 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 and it was right. just like a freeze frame and they yeah. didn't light up at all that no, was, I noticed that, that too. That was very annoying I is that, that when too. a gunshot goes off, I learned this through like Rocket Jump and Freddie yep. W and Corridor Digital. Yep. The the person lights up almost to a fully white yeah. Yeah. point. Yep. Um they they said like when you're holding out a gun, like the top of the arm should be like white sure. and yeah. the front of the face should be white. Yeah, cuz you imagine that is a flash of light for an instant. I mean, literally, it is an instant. It, it, yeah, it's an explosion. Yeah, exactly. And so it is a very bright light. I mean, it is very bright. So, yeah, definitely you would have that. I noticed that, too. There was no reflection. There was nothing. Well, but then I also noticed there was a shot of Dolph Lundgren shooting. Yeah. And the tip of the gun was yeah. off camera. Yeah. And so I was like, it was such like a close-up. And I'm like, okay. They saved money on having some poor intern <laughs> do the muzzle flash. Right, exactly, but also he yeah. was shooting off yeah. was, the nose or the the muzzle of the gun was off camera. Yeah, and he wasn't even lighting up. Right. So it was yeah. so clear that he was just like clicking the plastic yeah. gun or whatever. That is a trick that I would have done. I'm not kidding. I would have done that as uh, in my. Um, senior project movie right we did that and as a matter of fact to do the gun effects where you wouldn't see the muzzles because then you wouldn't see the muzzle flash right but that was a trick we did when i was in eighth grade or i was in 12th grade as a senior in high school shooting on super i was gonna say what was that 1984 then yeah 1984 so yeah that was a trick we did back then so no, you don't. Nowadays, you got plenty of stuff, but it yeah. takes. And I remember I learned how to do muzzle flashes probably 2010. Yeah, so probably coming up on 12 years ago. Yeah. And it looked about what yeah. was in this movie. Right. Yes, uh, exactly. Just a, yeah. A repetition of a single sound and a single PNG file of a muzzle flash right. that I dropped over the muzzle of the guns. Well, remember, we did that uh, really cheesy remake of The Matrix with you guys as young guys. Oh, yeah. I'm like, with, what? Like five? You're like, yeah, five or six or whatever. Yeah. And we used the same sound effects. Yeah. And we used the muzzle flash and we used all the same stuff. I mean, it l- really was. And the electricity. You remember the electricity yeah, they had yeah, going? Yeah. yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we did that a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> and it looked about as good. Um, a couple more things. Yeah. Dolph Lundgren is just at the end of a hallway, it looks like. <laughs> His like little computer <laughs> setup is like at it the is. end of a hallway. It it's, it's like, like the, the weirdest thing. It's yeah, the weirdest awkwardly long room yeah. Yeah. ever. Right. 
very, very odd. Yeah, very odd that he would have that. I don't know. And also, the, no so he's watching the the girl while she does everything. Right. This reminded me a lot of one of our previous episodes of Need for Speed with Michael Keaton in it, because it looks like they just got Dolph Lundgren to like to be in one room for maybe twelve hours of shooting. Oh right, right, because right, right. Because he was right. just in one yeah. room. He wasn't going anywhere until the end of the movie. Then he's in a, it literally probably was the same house. He probably was at the right. same house the entire time. They needed him yeah. for three days. Right. And they just and said, we're going to shoot him a million day. dollars or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, right. And, you know, that's yeah, another that was, trick. Too. It was very noticeable that yeah. he was just creating a sort of watcher character is a right. very easy way to shoehorn in a big celebrity. Absolutely. Because you yeah. tell him, hey, we need you for one day. In yep. this room, say these lines, we'll dress you up, and then there's no way there was more than a week of shooting with Dolph. So do you remember another movie that did it besides uh, Need for Speed? Ooh. The other movie that, that we've did? reviewed? Yes. Um, nothing comes to mind. Rhymes with Mammon Ball Run 2. <laughs> Who was in a room? Cannonball Run 2. Um, I got that. Was... Thank you. <laughs> I, I deciphered your Frank, code. Frank Sinatra. Remember? Frank Sinatra was oh, like in one yeah. room by himself. And he they they and actually they, shot with yeah, him for they, I think forty minutes right, or something. Right, exactly. I forgot about that. And they that. put him in one room by himself and then they have one picture of him in a car. He's in one car. Well, and remember and they it. got like stand ins or something. Oh, yeah, so he's yeah. not actually even talking he's to never, anyone. No. He's, he's not even with everyone so again, because they you, were yeah. If you have a high priced actor you could only have for a couple days, yeah. Make sure he's in a room by himself <laughs> talking yeah. to a computer or something or whatever, because yeah, that's how you do it. I that's forgot how, about that. That's a yeah, good one. That's how you make them. So anyway. One positive note that I Oh, did okay, have. good. Uh, was that I did like that it the the mother son uh, sort of relationship. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was different and good. fresh to be like yep. a mom running around yep. to save my son right. rather than. Right. I feel like it's just always action hero trying to save his daughter. Yeah. It's okay, like oh yeah, helpless okay. girl overbearing father. Yeah. I, I, I like the taken I like the flip taken the two script. taken three yeah. taken fifty four right yeah all the yeah. um so I, I I did like that sort of change in pace. Um, but you know, I, I, I have very few good things to say about wow. this movie. That's it? Yeah. Like, that, that, that's are you my done? One. That, that's all my notes. We could talk about the Maserati for a little bit, okay. but I looked on IMDb. There's yeah. literally no trivia. No, there's not. There's not even a trivia <clears throat> section. Well, there is one thing about a gaff that there was, um, while well, Dolph Lundgren is looking down through the camera. Yeah. Um, the waitress sets down a piece of pie. Well, not when he's not looking at... Okay, back up. In the scene, the waitress places down a piece of pie. Right. When Dolph Lundgren is looking from whatever CCTV camera he is looking from, right. the pie is gone. Then when they come back to the table, the next shot, the pie is there. So, I don't think they had I mean, anyone on set for continuity. I don't think anyone was on set, period. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I, I mean, think it was a GoPro yeah. and a couple of shotgun microphones, yeah. and you're good to go. Um, so there's yeah. no trivia, although I did want to read, before we'll get to the Maserati, yeah. is there's a description for the movie on IMDb. Okay, did you read the go. description? No, I did not read the description. It might be the worst description I've ever <laughs> seen for a movie. <laughs> wow. Okay. It just says, All right. this. so if you're All looking right. like, oh, what's this movie about? This is what IMDb says about okay. the movie Acceleration. All right. A mom has one night to do some tasks in L.A. requiring a gun if she wants to see her son alive. He's held by a mob boss. <laughs> That's it. That is word for word. You you have actually left more descriptive notes when you were going to run out to get some coffee or yeah. something like that. Hey, Dad, running out to get some coffee. First of all, a mom has one night to do some tasks. <laughs> right. Super vague in L.A. Requiring yeah. a gun. Yeah. Oh, just okay. so it's like it's not oh, grocery yeah. shopping, guys. No, I just guess so it's you not, know, but it's requiring a gun. So I don't know. Maybe it's she's going to a gunsmith or so something. So that's that's the whole first sentence. Right. Is a mom has a, has one night to do some tasks in L.A. requiring a gun if she wants to see her son alive. Period. He's held yep. by a mob boss, which I feel like is. Now you're the grammar guy, but yeah. I feel like 
grammatically, he's held by a mob boss is not good because there's no descriptor of who he is because it's its own sentence, correct or no? Is that is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, it, it well, it, it's ambiguous. So yeah. that's the whole thing is that it, when you have something like that, you don't want to be ambiguous, so you would want to say yeah. the sun is, is held he? by... The sun is held by a mob, you know. Right. Or you might say, comma, who is held by, or who is being held by a mob boss. I probably would re- <laughs> rewrite that entire, yeah. that entire, uh, I, I think if I'm on IMDb Pro, I could probably do that. I Are you planning probably, on doing that? I might. I might do IMDb Pro. All right. Because I, you know, I'm starting to use it more and more. Yeah. And it just is kind of fun. That's fair. But, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so we can get back <coughs> to the Maserati. Shout out to IMDb, yeah, by sh- the way. And if they want to sponsor. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I, does IMDb make money? I guess with the Pro membership. Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm sure there's advertising. Oh, yeah. Probably advertising and stuff. But, yeah. but, no. All right. Anyway. Um, so. Yeah. All right. So let's ca- talk the about the Maserati. The car in the movie is. Yeah. A 2014. Do you, know, do you know the history of Maserati? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Replay the first like 15 minutes. 26 minutes. Uh, anyway, yeah. It was 26 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what are we at now? We are at uh, 54. Oh wow. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I can't imagine we're going to go too much longer, no. to be honest. No. Uh, but the car in the movie is a 2014 Maserati Ghibli, uh, 3.0 liter V6. You could get it without a twin turbo. You can get it with twin turbos. You can find a, a bigger V6. Blah blah blah. Eight speed automatic. Um, reliability index rated Maserati as its 40th manufacturer in terms of re- reliability. 40th. Yes. H- out of how many did they say? 40. 40. No. 40. So Are you serious? Maserati is the least wow. reliable brand according to worse reliability th- index. Worse than Jaguar? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes, Do you yes, know yes, what Jaguar? Are? I don't remember. Okay. They're not high, but no, they're, they're higher high. than you think. It's weird. Really? Yeah. Okay, all right, because I normally, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jaguars are um, like, uh, whatever. A 2014 Maserati uh, has depreciated 72.2% <laughs> between 2014 and 2019. All right, I'm so going out and buying one. So that's still two years off. I'm going to buy one. Um, so, and this is the <laughs> most depreciated car from that segment of time. All right, I'm totally buying one. <laughs> I mean, you could find them for 20 grand. You could find right. them for the price that I got all my right. Mazda 3. Wow. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so in 2021, the Ghibli starts at 75000 and you can spec them way past $110,000 yeah. if you want. Okay. But in five years, that'll be, that'll be a $20,000 car. Wow. If you buy a $100,000 car. You know, that's less than a Model A. Yeah. 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 Which wow. is insane. Okay. So right. it is the fastest depreciating car. <laughs> it is the least reliable it's, car. So it is the fastest in something. Yes. <laughs> so when they titled the movie Acceleration, <laughs> they were just talking about the depreciation <laughs> of the Ghibli. That's actually why they named it that. Acceleration <laughs> to zero. Is that the name of the movie? Depreciation. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That that should okay. be the true name is just depreciation. <laughs> By the That's time a... she was done with her tasks in the morning, from the night before, her car had lost over a thousand dollars in value. Wow! Yes, that's actually yeah. you're probably done. On. And I'm probably sure like, they just rented yeah. one from yeah. like Turo or whatever. They probably, they probably, they probably did. did. They probably did. Yeah. I mean, well, how many? Did you say they had two though? The white one and was yeah. There's there? a white one at the end, so oh, they rented so. a different okay. one. Then they rented it. Well, I'm sure they rented yeah. a different one for a couple hours. Which or whatever. Yeah. I know some yeah. writer. Which God bless writers. Hard job. Yeah. Um, but someone was like, oh, she'll drive away in a white one to right. symbolize exactly. that she's pure now. Right. Well, like be- when villains die and their arms <clears throat> form a cross yeah. and you go, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. Well, there's that thing that she talks about because the guy says, oh, nice car or something. Yeah. And she says, he says, is this your car? And she says, for tonight. Yeah. So it could be whatever. And Maybe I get that's that it's her hard. daily driver, and then she switches to the black right. one to do right. all that stuff. Right, exactly. Which now she's only like $40,000 into cars because <laughs> uh, they've depreciated so much. Maybe right. that's why she, she has so many of them. Maybe she has like a whole like garage full of Maseratis because at the end of the day, that's only like a hundred grand for like who, eight cars. Because who doesn't? Who right. doesn't have a garage well, full like, of Maseratis? With depreciation so, that hot yeah. might all as right. well, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I you could totally buy get... one Mercedes S Class, <laughs> an S five fifty AMG. Yeah, highly recommend. Wow, or yeah. you, you, you can like buy Mercedes. like eighty yeah. Maseratis. <laughs> that is true. So, uh, no, so that is, uh, yeah, that's actually very interesting. That, um, yeah, that she had also 
Did you see a car seat in there? Wow. Yeah, wow. Mother of the wow. year. She like will also when the white okay, car is exactly leaving. Okay, not exactly mother or father of the year. Yeah, no kidding. That kid <laughs> that they're going to make up. eight sequels called Trauma <laughs> 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8. Um oh my but goodness. at the end of the uh, end of the movie she pulls away in the white Maserati yeah. mm-hmm. and she like well, I'm sure like some stunt driver or whatever, but like yeah. kind of half floors it and it like screeches yes. the tires. Yes. But yes. It doesn't yes. really like, it doesn't like slide. Right. It doesn't like, no. it's just like, <laughs> like, like when you accidentally, like, have you ever pulled out a Walmart and you didn't notice that there was a car coming? So you kind of floor it and screech the tires right. a little bit. Yeah. That's kind of what she and, did. And there was a little bit of gravel. Right. There's a little bit of gravel. And, and she had a kid in the car. Like, yeah. what are exactly, you doing? Right. Your kid yeah. just got shot at. Right. Not only that, by the way, if you go back... And the sandwich at 2 a.m. I know you're going to talk about that. <laughs> but not only that... This kid's got an upset <laughs> stomach, a bullet, nearly bullet wound. Did you see? Now, if you look at it very carefully, and again, I did literally frame by frame. Yeah. He is literally in the middle of a gunfight. Yeah. There are bullets flying all over the place. If he were actually there... PNGs of bullets, I, but yes. <laughs> JPEGs of bullets JPEG. going by. So... <laughs> In other words, images. Yeah. yeah. So yes. So if you st- if you f- if you go frame by frame, there's no way that he would not have been hit by some yeah. or fifty bullets. Which also before this, because he happens, runs right in front of guns going off. Right. So yeah. Also, the dad just gave the kid away. Yeah, if he you did. remember? Oh, he does. Yeah. Which he gave the yeah. kid away. Yeah. Which is oh like yeah, here's yours. Terrible dad. But also, <laughs> um, he's yours. <laughs> okay. When. Sorry. Dolph Lundgren approaches Sean Patrick Flannery. Yeah. I don't know what he says. Yeah. He's talking about planting a flag. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. Right before that, he says something that I swear he says something about Legos. I replay. <laughs> I replayed the clip. First of all, the audio the mixing Legos. is terrible in yeah, this it scene. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, Legos. As as something as like as that. As and I'm like, I, I thought he was saying like he played Legos with the kid or something. Something like, like are that. you jealous of Legos? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I was no, so no, you I got replayed it. it twice, and I was like, no, you got it right. What that is was he exactly? Talking? Yeah. That was exactly the screen yeah. word for word. You jealous uh, Legos? You're jealous Legos? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, was he? Because that's the de- that's the deleted scene I want to see. Right? Because yeah. Sean Patrick Flannery's character is very interesting to me because right. he's very back and forth. Yes. He's like trying yeah. to calm the guy down and yeah. then he shoots him in the head. Yes. And it, like when he's electrocuting well, okay, the guy, okay, he's like, hey, we can figure it out. Hey, yeah. we can figure it out. And yeah. then he's like, shock him more. Like it, it's very weird. So I could see him playing with Legos no. <laughs> and then like shooting a minifigure in the head, like a little yeah. Lego guy in the head. Be like, right. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the that was the other thing, too. The whole thing about the Russian roulette where the. the he, OK, so Sean Patrick Flannery's yeah. character, whatever his name is. He has uh, a, a another one of his henchmen come in. The henchman has lost the guns or the money. Insert you know expensive was, thing here. I was just yeah. about to say yeah. insert any insert, lost action movie right. cliche. Right, exactly. I lost the thing, boss. Lo- hey, yeah. boss, I lost the money and yeah. the thing. Hey, lady, that was kind of a Jerry Lewis. <laughs> if Jerry, <laughs> if Jerry Lewis was in a oh my God. movie, what's LA, the deal LA. with? Oh, wait, no, that's Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> What's the deal with me <laughs> losing these guns? <laughs> Porsche. That's that's my Jerry Seinfeld impression. <laughs> just terrible, just awful. So he does so he, the guy comes in and says, Oh boss, I lost oh, <laughs> oh lady, I buy lost the guns. Well, well. Harry then- Carey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that one. I lost that's the guns. <laughs> Well, hey, fourth hey, inning stretch. Hey, Carrie, here was Steve Strong. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, so, no, so that he comes in and he says, okay, we're going to play a little game, right? Yeah. So then he's got a, he brings out a cigar case with two revolvers and giant guns, by the way. Yeah. They're like 44 Magnums. They're huge guns. Brings out the guns and he plays, it's really, really, really stupid how they play this Russian roulette. Yeah. He hands him a gun and he says, okay, uh, you know, take three clicks, and if you don't get shot in the head, basically, you can walk away. Right. And then he said, I'm going to do it, too. Okay, first of all, you're the boss. Yeah. Why would you even put yourself yeah. in that position, right? Yeah. So then he gives the guy the gun that has no bullets in it, and the guy, the, the bad guy or the, the henchman, 
gets up and thinks he's going to kill the big bad boss and clicks like six clicks. And of course, there's no bullets in the gun. And the, the boss goes, hey, you think I'm stupid? And then he puts the bullet in the chamber and he doesn't spin the chamber. Yeah. He just closes the gun. So literally, if you know anything about guns, the guy could have literally picked up the gun, looked down the chamber to see which which yeah. chamber, which um, uh, in the in the. Um, well, no, he couldn't have because there was only two lights in that room, <laughs> and one was red and one, one was, was blue. Right. <laughs> it was bad lighting. So he'd been like, he so, would have pulled out his phone flashlight yeah, or something, yeah. but but he could have seen where the bullet right, was. Right, 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 yeah. So okay, that would have been stupid. And then the other thing is. Okay, you just gave this guy a loaded gun. Now he knows it's loaded. Yeah. And he knows where the bullet could be. So why didn't he just turn the gun on you and keep clicking until it... it, it just none of that made sense at all. Why that whole you, scene was, A, way too long as well. Way too long. And didn't also, make any sense. I'm angry at that well, scene. Well, but also, like, his character, he's like, he's like, hey, man, we yeah. all believed you yeah. pulled the trigger. You're right. a big, strong guy. Like, yeah. you don't have to prove right. anything to us. Yeah. And then he killed, like, it, it's so back and forth. He's <laughs> a very weird character. Yeah, well, he wasn't Mike, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Hey, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, 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 Gun, how you doing? Hey, Gun, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, bad guy, how you doing? Man? How you doing? Say, say hi to your mother. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the shoot. Have you seen that movie? <laughs> I was in the other guys with Will Ferrell. <laughs> you know Will Ferrell? Mark Wahlberg. Shout out to yeah, Mark shout Wahlberg. Out Mark Wahlberg. Oh, uh, open yep. invite for Mark Wahlberg. To always, come on the pod. always come on the podcast. Um, yeah. So very, very. I mean, that made me angry because that was a waste yeah. of film. Literally, that was a waste of film. You don't even develop that film. Shoot yeah. it. Don't develop. Even if it was on a flash card, throw away the flash card because that is just you know yeah. that SD card that you shot that on. And did you notice? Okay, so literally from the very first scene when they open the trunk. I knew it was not going to be a good movie. Why? I knew it was not going to be a good movie because it just looks so hokey bad. Yeah. Like it was like, okay, uh, this Some is going to be Some of the camera crap. movements were just weird. Like it was like yeah. yep. not steady cam, yeah. which I get it. Not everything has to be steady cam, but yeah. like it was like not good handheld either. And by the way, this won five awards in uh, film festivals. So there you go. Well, I'm I'm happy to see that blind film festivals are still a thing. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's really important for us to support wow. uh, disabilities. Wow. And wow, what did well, it win for? It won for best film. Uh, it won most appreciated star, star vehicle. <laughs> most, most appreciated vehicles in the film. course of filming. They've lost twenty thousand dollars in vehicle value. Yes, and that won for that, and then it won. Uh, the kid won for best, uh, or was at least nominated for best new Best actor. sandwich at 2 in the morning? <laughs> best sandwich eater. Best at two kid to eat a sandwich at 2 a.m. and somehow not get a stomachache. <laughs> and to be able to run through bullets yeah. somehow. Kid that <laughs> somehow escapes with minimal trauma from being shot at. Yes, it's a very specific yeah. award. It's a very, it's a specific, very award. specific award. Yeah. It was just that and uh, some of the Stranger Things kids that got <laughs> nominated for that one. Almost being killed by your parents' <laughs> mess ups. Um, exactly. No, it was. And so having that thing of them being parents of the kid, I just, uh, you know, yeah, it was frustrating. I enjoyed that there even was a twist because yeah. it sounds like the writers actually met in somewhere <laughs> besides like a Denny's. <laughs> uh, it sounds like uh, they actually maybe, planned that out, which maybe, was kind of cool. Maybe um, in the twenty minutes that it took to write it, yeah. And so, no. Nah, but uh, so wrapping up here, would you would you watch yeah. it again? I, if it was on TV, would you change on, the channel? If it was on TV, to yeah. be honest with you, I'd probably leave it on just because you know I need something to listen to while I'm making spaghetti or something. Yeah. You know, um, I would not be like, oh yeah, tonight I really want to watch. Whatever this was, yeah. acceleration. We can watch like, it whenever you want because I bought it for eight dollars. No, I know. I'm gonna give you that money because <laughs> I feel okay. bad. I feel bad. I actually feel terrible for you. That if you I bought it recently, yeah. I would have. I I would return it, but uh, <laughs> I I bought I it. Blame God, you, but I bought it several months ago. Nah, no, no, no. I'm this. giving you the money for this one because uh, it was really bad. But um, the other thing is, is that uh, I. You know, if it was on, I, I guess I, I, I wouldn't wouldn't take the time, I guess, to turn it off. But I would not look at it. I would yeah. not go, oh, yeah, it's a great film. What's it? I wouldn't watch I'd it. change the channel. Would you? Yeah. Like immediately? I just, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, you, you would throw a book across the room. Yeah, there's better the things to yeah. occupy my yeah. time with. No, you I know? don't blame it all. It's it is a very even leaving it on in the background. I mean, I just yeah. I, I wouldn't even leave it on in the background. I would just I, I, I might you know just I, to... I would just go back to see if he actually did mention Legos. I couldn't decipher yeah. it, <laughs> but I was also so tired of the movie. I'm like ah, I don't care, right. whatever. Yeah, I know. I need to I look up it. the script. Totally get it. Um, yeah, if there is a script, for this, jeez, yeah, <laughs> it's written on the back of a Taco Bell wrapper. Yeah, a Crunchwrap <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> So anyway, no. So uh, we're at the end here. Next movie. Yeah, it's your pick. Running. Is it my pick? So it is your pick. Are we? Where Where are we at? Are we in December? We are in December. We're in December. Yes. Okay. So I have one, which is a great family movie. Okay. Okay. It's, it It's well deserving of our December holiday time of the year. We're not at the. We're not at Christmas yet. No, are no, we? No, no, no. Okay. No. All right. So we have a special one for. We Christmas. We do have a special one for Christmas. We do which actually. We will, one, which we will. Uh, announce. Well, we'll announce the week before. Eh. Well, know, Christmas let's, let's, is on Sunday, by the way. This year, Christmas is Sunday. It's on Saturday. No, it's Sunday. Is it? Is Saturday. it Saturday? Yeah, okay, because this, the episode will come out on Christmas. Okay. Because we were thinking of doing a Christmas special, right. but it's just okay, a regular yeah, episode day that. anyway. Wow. Thanks, um, Christmas. No yeah, shout, shout out to, to Christmas. <laughs> no shout out to Christmas. Um, okay. So Christmas morning, we will have a special Christmas episode. All right. The uh, let's let's announce it now in case people want to order the DVD. Yeah, because we did have, have to order, order it. it. Okay. Um. Or can you do the? Can you do an online download? No. Oh you no. Can, okay. You only can order it. As far as I know, you can only order the DVD. So it's only. It's called Christmas Cars. Yes. Uh. It, it it'll have the General Lee on it. Yes. From Dukes of Hazard. Yes. That is our Christmas special. So we're telling you now, so you can order the movie and watch it and know what the heck we're talking about. Christmas cars. Uh, Christmas cars. Um, and Spelled out Christmas, not X Mass. Right. Whatever. Christmas cars. Right. Plural. Uh, and it yeah, should have the General Lee on the front. Should I have believe. the General Lee, and it's who's the um the guy who plays Bo Duke. Yes, the guy who plays Bo Duke, not the dark haired one, but the blonde guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's in the movie. He's, so yeah, he was in the movie. We haven't watched it yet. We have no. the DVD ordered. We have it. Um, that will be our Christmas episode. So yep. like I said, uh, get out and order that movie uh, if you want to stay up to date. And that's why we're telling you beforehand. Okay. Um, but yeah. So. so this one, next movie, Cars Three. Oh, okay. Cool. We did watch Cars Two, and we already yes. we reviewed that one, and I was happily surprised by Cars Two. So Cars Three. Is going to be because you told me you said people really enjoyed this one, and it kind of went back to the original story. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so from what I've yeah. heard, Cars Three is better than Cars Two. Yeah. So and it's better than Blood Cars. Hopefully, I mean that's the goal. <laughs> we don't know yet. So unless unless Pixar comes out with a Blood Cars, which would be a really scary, terrible that would be a twist. hard left turn for <laughs> Pixar. Um, yeah, but cool. Yeah, Cars Three. I'm excited right, about so that. Cars then. Three. Uh, so I actually, I was, I saw a clip from it today. Actually, you did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Someone, Good. someone dubbed Lightning McQueen to have actual V8 sounds. <laughs> I, I watched like it was like a 30 second video. It was, the, it was yeah. weird. But you um, still have to show me. By the way, you said there was an animatronics version of uh, Lightning McQueen. That is at Disney. Oh yeah, it's on my saw. phone. Yeah, I'll yeah, but I need to say that. At, say, I need to see that. <laughs> I need to say it. I need to say it, boy. Oh, uh, I'm catching the vapors. Oh my god! All right, <laughs> all right. This movie has gotten us loopy. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Yep. You can check thank us you. out on Spotify. Yep. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify, you can check us out on YouTube. You can see my beautiful thumbnail drawings. Yeah. I draw a custom thumbnail yes. for each episode. And it's awesome. I put them uh, on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not amazing, but no, they're hope you guys great. enjoy the episode, and yeah. we'll catch you next week. All right, you know what? I also need a a sign off. So if you have any ideas for me for a sign off, please leave them in the comments. If you're on YouTube, like, yeah, you, you just normally go bye 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 bye. Exactly, yeah, that's okay. Then you know that's fine. Okay, all right, bye bye. <laughs>